2023. So we'll have demos from Zoltan. Yes, I will have one about, um, about theming media theme. Uh, theming. Uh, Blah, blah. Any other demo? <laughs> oh, there is a topic. There's, <clears throat> there's one thing I like to just add on the agenda of this meeting. I added a new tag. Uh, it's called steering or needs steering. Mm. And I think oh, maybe oh. we should just review like these tags during this meeting. Just like for any issues or PRs that don't need a code review, but need maybe a different kind of attention. Maybe we can review it here. Yeah, it's hard to call it steering now because there is no such thing, but. Well, this is this meeting in the docs is still called uh, steering meeting. So that's why it's called that's steering. Good. Yeah, it, that, because that was the initial, but yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, we can. Um, so, so I say, blah, 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 don't be orchard harvest. And, 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 I don't know Matt, who's Matt? Matt, Matthew. Uh, the topics, the moves. I will add that just in case we have time and we can talk about that. Uh, nothing else, so status. Status, oh, here. There was one issue, I think, so nothing merged. Oh, should go. Uh, third here. So this one use global using. Oh, I think we merged it during the meeting. Okay, so we merged it during merged it during meeting, and we said it should not impact any PR because they were in tests, unless a PR was updating the test, which is not likely. And worst case, so it's a simple merge. So this is good. Add database schema and options as default table name separator database schema and options. So the PR was merged. Uh, which means new sections in the in the configuration. So nice comment, which is which is which is table options. So now you can define the name of the document table. If you want to change it instead of document, you can change the table name separator for tenants, like tenant one underscore table name, in case you use table names for um, tenant isolation, and the default identity colon size or type in this case, that's a PR issue, but that would work. Um, it's actually not a PR issue. The new default is integer 64 moving forward. Any new any new tenant you create will be created with the integer 64 now. I'm not saying um, what a, the size name, I think, because it's called in, in 64, it's not a size, right? It's a type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, just, okay. Name, yes. I'm just concerned about the naming, everything else we said. So yeah, so as Mike explained, um, all the tenants currently are using int32 because that's what uh, YesSQL was supporting only. Then um, there was some contribution and work on YesSQL to add support for also in 64, so long uh, 64 bits integers because some people reached the limit of int32 in YesSQL. And you can't migrate from int32 to int64 in SQL Server on other databases. So this is an option to say what will be the next tenants database uh, schema. 
and uh, and 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 the default now for the new tenants will be to use in 64. Every existing tenant will still use in 32 and would keep working with in 32. But the new tenants will use in 64. If you need to migrate, you will have to do your own migration. That's good. And also you can define the schema of the tenant, but this is also configurable from the UI. This is not configurable from the UI, right? And this is configurable from the UI because that's something that users might change, but will change per tenant. This is something that they are, they will probably not change per tenant and probably nobody will change it ever, or very few people will have to change it, or will want to change it. This one, much more common. That's very good improvement also to, to be able to isolate per schema. This way, all the database, all the table names are the same. It's just a schema that will uh, partition the database for each tenant. Super useful for scripting or for yeah, multi-tenant stuff. Good. Updated .NET to 6 or 12. Um, which is mostly the libraries that are using that. I remove unuse testing data attributes. Okay, cleaning some code, remove abstraction to some code, mock updates and mock updates, shell settings, request URL hosts that use static separator. Just refactoring. I'm to send the code here. Settings to request your host. There might be multiple values. Now, okay. So this is because this can have multiple values. I see, so I would expect this property to be new, but not remove the old one. And assume that when you say the old one is the first one, and this one returns a list. Okay, so let's see. Oh no, this is this is not a new property. This was existing. Okay. So this is just fixing an issue. Good. Permission check for content type filter. That's some refactoring with the new content item factory create, which is to cache. We actually removed that in the next PR. You'll see we actually removed the factory altogether. Okay. Uh, to eliminate confusion. Because some people will think it's a factory and they just want to create it to create content items and it's very bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we removed it in the next PR. Okay. Didn't we talk about the name on Thursday? No, I don't think so. We okay. remote we talked about the caching. Uh, yeah, I probably have forgotten about that because I think that yeah. was my first. ID, but then we focused on the how you did that and if you took into account the things and the merge and it was fine. So then, okay. Uh, we made it as an extension, which is much simpler. Okay. Brilliant users from breaking and roles is disabled. Is this one still in? 
Yeah. Okay. So this one is about being able to disable the roles module without breaking anything. And it means that when there is no roles, then you need to be able to still grant permission for user to do things, but there's just no roles anymore. So you can do everything, right? Yep, now you can use uh, the app without roles or with roles. And one important thing is that in that case, you register a dummy whole service, the null whole store, and uh, this one, the whole service, which is a default one in this case, which does nothing, returns nothing, because we still need a service, which is in the abstractions. That's good. That's a weird new dependency though. I know why you need the dependency to be able to test the implementation. But that's weird. I don't see which why. one the, the depending on users from roles. Mm, I have to check why. I think we removed it in a different PR. There's a lot of PRs around this that took place over the weekend. So I, I I'll see. check. I don't see next that. PR. I think I, I have to check and see the reasoning. I I don't know. There's a lot of communication. Yeah, I think it's just a mistake or something you forgot to remove because it's not necessary from the changes I see. Yeah, I, I think it's handled in, okay. in, a, in a later PR. We'll, we'll check. Adox test benchmark. Remove I content identity. Accuracy features optional to non default tenant. So be able to not enable the features module such that only default can and remove features, even if they have the list, if there's a list of a low, a low list of features. So yeah, so removing that and that means what was the trick here? Uh, and the features controller. We, uh, we made the change.
What does it mean? This feature is always enabled and cannot be disabled. So <clears throat> if you are a default tenant, which is not brought proxy, and oh, you're okay. trying to disable a feature ID, uh, okay, or the then you the cannot features, do okay. that. Yeah. Okay, you can't disable the features feature from the default tenant. That's what it means. Okay. Or so is proxy? Yeah, I see. That's is is proxy that threw me away. Okay. Okay. So it's is the default. Okay. Okay. Good. Fixing the storm I saving. You know, moving the role from the user. Yeah, that was an issue introduced by a different PR that we merged, so we just fixed it. Holds a data. Yeah, we talked about that by the call. So did John Terry find the issue? Yeah, so the issue is that when you have custom um, or, or type-based uh, permissions, they weren't saving using the UI. Uh, so he made uh, changes to fix that issue. And notably, you see why I say when, when remember, I think two weeks ago you mentioned no this cannot break anything and i said lol when you said well, this cannot break anything it's not related to that just saying that most of the time when we say it cannot break anything we are like a few weeks ago a few weeks after a few months after we're like oh fuck, it, it broke something because we don't see that but you can't say it will not break anything it's, yeah you know, the, the only way you can break anything if you don't make a change <laughs> exactly and, and, that's, and that's also why i'm like yeah, and, and, and you understand why I say sometimes I don't want to touch it. It's not, there is no problem. Don't try to fix anything because we'll just break something. That this is the only thing you can do, break something. Even PRs like, oh, let's remove, and you know, oh, let's remove that or let's remove that or because somebody is using that, that you know, like, you hope that, but. And and also when by experience on some features that were very hard to to design and to build, and you know that it's it's almost flaky. Like you hope it it still works after a change. So yeah, that's why. Okay, but that's unrelated. It's just a comment I made on your issue a while ago. Fix last part. This part navigation is a bit dynamic. Okay, some UI stuff. All right, CSS. Uh, good, 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 good. So, topics. Topics, 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 topics. Demos, uh, demos first. Sultan, demo. Your turn. All right. Uh, just a sec. Let me. Let me uh, start sharing my screen, but even before that, I will share a link because uh, this will be about uh, uh, about something we call a media theme. And uh, I will first uh, introduce the problem uh, or, the, or the challenge, and, and then I will uh, show you how the magic works uh, uh, from a user's perspective. Uh, and finally, uh, I will show you uh, how the sausage is made. So I'm sharing my screen now, and Chrome decided to blank out. That's interesting. 
<laughs> okay. So uh, I will I will apparently have to have to reopen everything here. I think the size is good, but if if anyone else thinks it's too small, just say something. Oh, okay. Uh, please do. Um, it's a full HD, by the way, so it should be legible in most places. So, uh, uh, sorry, I had a, a couple of tabs open here and apparently uh, uh, Chrome uh, pooped itself a little bit, so I had to re reopen, them, uh, reopen them. But um, uh, here's, um, here's the most important thing, uh, media theme. Uh, this is uh, an open source project. Uh, you can check out uh, all the details here, uh, examples, whatever. What is this and why do we have this? Well, um, the inspiration came from our uh, public Orchard Courses.nest. Uh, if you don't know it, uh, this is where you can sign up and get an Orchard Course site uh, or an Orchard One website actually uh, with two clicks. It's for everyone. Uh, we don't vet uh, who is signing up. Um, so it should be safe uh, and it should be limited. But still, uh, we want people to be able to um, have their sites as flexible as possible. And uh, of course, there are a lot of built-in features in Orchard for that. So uh, you can do a lot from the admin. Uh, one of the things you can do from the admin as well uh, in a limited fashion is theming. So uh, there's a templates module. Um, if, you, if, if the developer or the operator of the application allows it, then you can also upload CSS files and you can do all kinds of tricks to actually include them. So in the end, you can adjust the styling of your website. But uh, we wanted to have something closer to the usual developer experience. Uh, that is, uh, pretty much create a theme for your .NET site, so with the help of media theme for uh, a tenant in a SaaS, and uh, that's what media theming is about. We have uh, a documentation page, documentation page about that here. Well, it's not much because it only links to, to various other resources. Uh, most importantly, the SDK. So uh, this is what I will use to demonstrate how it works. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, we also have automatic deployments, um, either from the command line or from uh, from a GitHub Actions action, if you will. So uh, I will show that on the example of my new personal website. Uh, we could also call it a sort of blog. It's not important, but I have set up everything for it uh, locally, and I actually used media theming to adjust a couple of things. Because well, as you can see, this is pretty much the blog uh, theme and recipe. I didn't really care about the design, but I did adjust a couple of things. Namely, uh, I added a favicon. Uh, I added a little bit of CSS on every page. Um, I adjusted the templates or shape uh, template overrides that drive these summaries and uh, these details as well. Uh, namely, I'm using not markdown, markdown body part for blog post, but HTML body parts. So for them to be able to uh, display properly here, the template needed to be changed. I also removed uh, the posted by username here because, well, everything is posted by me, so it's not really necessary. So uh, I will now change some code on this website and get it in Visual Studio, uh, push it to a repository and get it deployed automatically. So uh, we actually have, uh, uh, this is not the Visual Studio instance that I wanted, but this one. Uh, let me clean this up a bit. Uh, yeah, this one. So uh, I have a Visual Studio instance here. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's an Orchard solution. Well, probably you can't see because there's not much telling here, but it looks similar to an Orchard solution. It is, uh, it uses, uh, a web application that imports uh, everything necessary for Orchard. So yeah, all the Orchard core uh, packages, the, the basic packages, and also commerce, because we are uh, using that on .NEST. So everything is added here that's available on .NEST. And uh, I also have a theme project here, which is uh, pretty much a standard theme. Uh, there are uh, 
limitations on what you can do here. Namely, you need to use liquid templates and these liquid templates also need to be named like uh, shapes. So not like the files, uh, but uh, the shape times. So you're not like content dash, uh, uh, sorry, dash, is it called dash? Yeah, I think it's called. It. So not content dash blog post, but content underscore underscore blog post. But that's pretty much the limitation. Otherwise, it's a usual theme. Uh, it can contain recipes, it can contain uh, whatever you want in the webroot folder. Uh, and of course, you can also use all kinds of client side build pipelines, like building SAS to CSS or anything else. That doesn't really matter. I'm not using it here because the CSS is just this. <laughs> so, uh, not really necessary to have any client side pipeline for this. Uh, but uh, uh, I have uh, the, la the layout uh, um, liquid template here, for example. So, let's change this. Uh, the application is actually running locally here. So if I go back to the browser, you see that I have the same thing now on localhost. I exported everything from my .NET site uh, to have the same content in a recipe here. So uh, let's do some time change here. I will just add uh, a hello here. Uh, save and uh, of course, it works. Uh, fantastic. Uh, that's not the highlight of the demo yet. Now, uh, let me also deploy it. So let's suppose that we did our changes. And now we want to deploy it to the production site. How you do that is there's a command line tool uh, that you can use to create a pretty much a zip file that then you upload. Or uh, you can use uh, automatic deployment. Uh, this is the clone of the repository that I have uh, for my, my personal websites on .NEST. It's a fork of the .NEST Core SDK. And I will just commit this. Uh, something like uh, dummy template change and push. And now what happens next is that in the repository of this, uh, under the actions, uh, the GitHub actions uh, automation, uh, Builds are kicked off. Uh, there's a normal build, uh, not that interesting. Uh, what's more interesting is that there's also this deploy media theme build. The only thing interesting that it does, uh, apart from the boilerplate and setup, is that it uh, installs a command line tool called lombic.hosting.mediatheme.deployer and uh, it generates a deployment package from the theme and pushes it to the site. This uses remote deployment behind the scenes, so it uses the built-in uh, Orchid features. Uh, it does a, does a remote import on the target site. So now, uh, if I go back to the production site and do a refresh, we should see, after a little bit of delay since the talent is restarting, that uh, we should be able to see the change that indeed happened. Now, uh, let me go here and quickly revert this because, well, uh, we don't really need that on the production side. And that's the basic uh, uh, basic uh, user experience. It's um, you, you, uh, you fork the SDK or otherwise you uh, work with um, an Orchard-based solution where you create a more or less normal theme. It just needs to use liquid, which is normal liquid. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other um, rules, well, probably just one other rule that you have to uh, adhere to um, about referencing uh, static resources, uh, but everything else will automatically just work. And when you are happy, uh, you can either create an import package by using a, a .NET tool, a command line tool that you have created, or you can also use the same command line tool to deploy remotely. Um, use remote deployment, the remote deployment feature of Orchard to import the same package on your production site. Or you can also build uh, or you use the GitHub Actions reusable workflow that we make available and have everything, have everything done automatically in like, uh, yeah, 10 seconds. And now we should go back, we should be back to the 
without hello version. And uh, yes, it still works. So uh, this is it. Uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, you're interested in the code, uh, it's up on GitHub, GitHub open source. Uh, if you would like to uh, try it out in your own sets, feel free. Uh, if you have questions, uh, let me know either now or on GitHub. And if you like to have a .NET site and use this, well, uh, just sign up. Why did you call it media theme? Isn't it an implementation detail? Uh, yes, uh, that's, uh, that's a very uh, relevant question and uh, kind of it is indeed. Uh, so, uh, it is media thing because everything is stored in the media folder. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, this is code, but you can't access it, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, it is, we couldn't think of a better name. And, and so the harvester is finding the files from this folder, I assume? Yes, uh, so there's a, a shape harvester. It also looks in this folder. Uh, by the way, it uh, employs caching, uh, basically like a media cache as well. So even if you are using a remote storage, it won't hit all of these all the time. And uh, well, the, the static assets, so, uh, something like a web manifest file or images and style sheets are served directly. Media cache is beautiful, I think, but I'm not sure Mike will agree with that. He wants to enable it. Um, we had a discussion on Thursday at Triage about Media Cache. Oh, I see. Uh, Disclaimer I do not agree with his last statement. Well, I just said I that should be optional. You shouldn't be forced into it because if you're using it, you need to know that what you're doing. That's all and, I'm saying. And the same answer as Zoltan is, yeah, we didn't find a better name for media cache, but it's not a media cache. <laughs> it's a technical yeah. thing to store locally stuff. Um, storage cache. Okay, well, that, that's nice. Thank you, Zoltan. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm sure Ant Antoine will steal it for trial. No, I don't think he will. It's just to try. Uh, well, uh, uh, please do. Well, uh, there's nothing to steal. It's uh, <laughs> It's open source. We've mentioned that though by the past to be able to, I'm sure there is an issue that we fight for that, to be able to edit a, a theme and assets like this, at least directly in the in the media page. And you have like Monaco editor to edit the templates. Well, templates, we have them in shape templates, but to edit the CSS and stuff, we, we could do that also. And, uh, yes, okay. Yeah, and you can too, right? It's just that if then you commit again something, then you override and you overwrite the, the files from the media. Yes, uh, so in the end, these are files in the media library, so you can directly uh, edit them or upload new ones. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the aim here was to provide you with a full orchard uh, theme developer experience, so you should also be able to do the whole thing locally, test locally, and then deploy. Is next step to be able to have a query argument such that you could have like a staging theme in a folder? You can try and then say, okay, I want to, you can push it, no? Like uh, on the .NET directly, not locally. Uh, yes, actually, uh, and that's a great idea. Uh, we also thought about that. Uh, it's a bit uh, down the line, but we um, but we consciously made it possible to have multiple media themes. Or well, uh, we uh, kept the option yeah. open. Okay, yeah, you could. It, it's just a folder, so it could be just even per request switch a folder based on whatever you want. Like it's a theme provider, and you could yeah, you could serve this different themes per request if one is. They, are, they, they could be like from a, a theme module, they could be from a media folder or any media folder, and yeah, you can just switch out of it. Okay. Good. Yeah, like uh, the theme preview in Orchard Map. 
done with the demos topics. Let's start with Mike. Mike needs chilling vote. So you say there is a new. Choose or request where I, I think PRs right now. I used it okay. and there's a couple PRs. I don't know about issues here. Yeah. Yeah, that one might need to be voted on, but I don't know. Oh, I was ping this morning. I looked at it, but I need to get back into context. So we'll do that on Thursday. So yeah, that, that's a good idea. So stuff we need to look at during the meetings instead of during the triage because we have a needs triage. And I assume that's why you said, OK, let's do a needs steering just so we can focus on that. And yep. that should be part of the workflow like we do for well we try for for triage to look at needs triage um so this one move all module settings to configuration settings and i believe i said look at the meetings and i personally don't really mind because i don't use these menus uh, da -da -da -da. So it's not, a, it's not a technical issue. That's why it's not a triage issue. We don't review the code. The code has, has nothing to do. The question is, should we move all the settings, everything that is core settings, under settings? Um, something we need for another PR and still open. We'll have to, to close that soon is we used yeah so let's we, let's do that again so we used um, a comment to play some thumbs up and thumbs down like this uh, seeing i am okay with that i did agree with that and then based on that then decide if we take it or not so i think we do the same thing mike if you're okay with that and yeah, yeah absolutely for so yeah i think we just need I, to make a decision if we don't want it we can close it if we want it then i'll need i'll need to do some work to fix those conflicts and stuff like that then is that so there is asks why So there is in the chat asks why. Why what? Why vote? That's uh, that's uh, that's a good question. What's why? Uh, so there is why why move the why, why? menu items? Uh, hi. Uh, why to move all uh, module settings under settings? So the well, idea behind the it, it uh, so the, the idea behind it to eliminate confusion because right now. If you don't really know a lot about Orchard, you're going to hunt for settings all over the place. For example, the user settings under user, role settings under you under roles. There's so many things. So the idea is have all the settings moved into one place. So if you are looking for any type of settings, there's one place you go and there's going to be your settings. So it'll be role settings. As you see the menu here, you'll see all the settings located under the settings or the configuration tab. So you're not wondering where the settings are. So that's it's more of a organizing and easier of access from a user perspective. Isn't everything a setting if it's not content? Configuration settings. So here under configuration, there is settings. You say security, this is security settings. This is authentication under security, under settings. Uh, under security, there is also open ID connect. There is localization here. Localization is, is under settings in this case, right? Yes. Because of the color, I can see that there is a difference. So localization is under settings. Um, 
What is not under certain? So today we have security under roles. Okay, so it's the same thing. So we have the same uh, sub uh, sub menu in the roles or okay. users. So we basically you, you shifted the same exact menu, but under settings, just because it's settings. So, so uh, let me ask if we have a module, let's say a Google Analytics module, and we want uh, the settings of this module, we should go under configuration settings, find the corresponding uh, Google Analytics and go there. This is the idea. I think so. The same way we have, you see here, recapture. It's under setting security. So Google Analytics will not be under setting security, but under settings something else. Google Analytics? I don't know. Analytics? I mean, if it's a custom model, it's up to you where you want to place it, right? But the idea is choose. if it's a settings, then it should be under settings so that way your users are not guessing how can i configure something if you want to configure something go under the configuration tab and then there are settings tabs that that allow you to determine settings hopefully if you were to add the google analytics module and you wonder where to put the settings we would already have a subsection under settings that would make sense so here there is setting security. OK, you can guess that everything here, like authentication, an ID connect, recaptcha, users. OK, this, this goes under security, which goes under settings. Under settings, we have localization. So I have a question about, and it's not about this PR. It's, we need to have, um, a, if possible, a very fixed set of options under settings. So it doesn't come to settings, Google Analytics, settings, Google Foo, settings, Google Bar, and so on. Like we can still group stuff. Right? So we have localization, there is uh, security, so we'll have to find something else. Some categories that will match everything. It's the same issue today, but yeah, you will to answer so this question. Do we really need a settings menu under configuration? That is a questionable, and that's a very good point. I, I And we had a conversation about it. That is definitely something we could eliminate. Uh, it's just there to group the settings under configuration. So yes, that is a valid point, and we could eliminate settings. So everything under configuration. Uh, because right now, not everything under configuration is truly settings. So configuration, there's other stuff, you know. So for example, tasks, tasks, the background tasks, there's a menu under configuration for tasks. So that's the idea of having settings. So the settings are grouped under settings. But if we are OK with taking it one level up, then we can. Uh, I just think the under settings, it just kind of more uh, group more properly, but it increases the depth of the navigation, which isn't really the best. So it's a it's a trade off. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure here because uh, this will probably grow very long, so uh, I'm I get the point and I, I kind of also agree with the whole change. But uh, for example, we have a lot of uh, security related settings. Uh, now they would be grouped here as well, but then we are adding a lot more items, a lot more levels here under this single configuration menu. So I'm I'm not sure. I'm not either way. You should have a lot of things. And they will have to be somewhere. So either under that or under someone something else. Yeah. 
it's hard to have a lot of things and at the same time say we want a few number of uh, main level things, which we said like the first level should be like five, six, and that's what we designed it for. And the fact that there is a mentioned task configuration, that's a good ex uh, example of why we would keep configuration because not everything is a setting like background job management is that the setting. You know, another thing we can do is put settings menu on the same level as configuration, right? So configuration uh, you know, would be something and then settings will be right next to it on the same level. So you don't have to click configuration to get to settings. You can just go directly to configuration or assume that configuration is settings and move everything up and everything else that isn't settings, put it in a different menu. Like for example, tasks. Tasks might not need to be under configuration. It could be under maybe a different, you know, root item called manage or something like that. Or tools, you know. So maybe we have a configuration, we put all the settings under configuration, and then we create a new menu item on the very root called tools. And if you want tools, you can go to like tasks and other stuff that aren't configuration, but they're tools. And we could say that's a discussion we've had when we designed the current organization and it was decided this way because of all these possibilities and caveats. And so, so it's yeah, and, and, and very possible. And that's why we need probably some sort of a vote because Yes, and, and also might not. if at least we had some notes about the design discussion and decision such that when someone has a new argument, we can change the position based on the new arguments. Because here we have all of good arguments and I'm sure we are missing the previous arguments to to make that that made the previous decision. Uh, OK, and also personally, I don't really understand the difference between configuration and settings. So for me, they are interchangeable as long as there is one like configuration setting, setting configuration. I don't know, like I go there and like. Yeah, no, that's what I say. It's a great point. It, it's a very good point. That's what I'm saying. I mean, some of the stuff that's in configuration today shouldn't really be under configuration. Like, you know, some of it isn't really configuration. Like tools, uh, not, not tools, I mean, uh, Tasks, tasks aren't configuration. Task is is a is a tool that you know. can utilize, right? So, I don't know. Yeah, just a thought. We can add maybe tool. security is not configuration. Maybe security its own stuff. Security configuration. Well, it's just it's a configuration for the security. That's what this ultra is just a configurable thing. So everything should be in the configuration. The content types are just configuration, but no, it's content. OK, so let's put it in our content. But it's really configuration because a content manager doesn't care about content types. It's just configured this way. The type is configured this way, but there is no configuration content. It's content types yeah. in content. I don't know. <laughs> so we, we, we rename configuration to settings. OK, and now everything settings. And then we add a new menu item called tools. And anything uh, that is in configuration, but a tool goes in tool and anything. I don't like tools at all. I, I hate this word. It's like everything else. Let's put everything else. It's, I, that's no, I don't know. Like. Okay. Yeah, I mean, tools okay. is something that, you know, I mean, we just uh, something that came up to mind now. And yeah, I know I in WordPress, they use the word tools. So I don't know. Maybe I, I'd rather is, focus on the changes here, which is like about moving set things to configuration and all the settings there and then think about the rest independently or continue discussion because now it's recorded and it will be more focused on that then again try to find another way inside the discussion about finding a way like it has to be more thought about with better suggestions and argumentation in this case because here we are just talking about 
we don't have context. Nobody has read the issues before this meeting, and we just see one screenshot of something without the rest. So it's just isolated context. So we can't decide on that. So either people read the issues, understand the issue, understand the PR and vote, or we come up with a different, more elaborated uh, proposal and alternatives. Like just seeing that with the context I have, and I probably have more than a lot of people here. You have more than me. I can't decide. I can't say it's good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Last time we talked about it was too. Old. So that's. I think that's good to have the needs steering because we need to for to to make decisions on things and um, advertise some discussions and decisions and ask for feedback. Uh, in this particular issue, we need um, it needs more design, or it needs to, to be kept this way. And don't try to add more things. We want that, or we don't want that. If we don't want that, then okay, let's. What do we want? And what are the options? And why do we make? Why should we make these decisions? So um, how about we do this? In I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll create a different PR that does that takes the uh, settings as a route and then we'll have a demo to compare the new one and then we make it this a vote uh if we want to do this and if we want to do this do we want to go with this route I, or not i think it's too much or most usually doesn't need to be a pr you can just come up with some excel file to show how to reorganize what we have today explaining what you think is the best way and maybe an alternative if you think there is a decision to make between this one or the other it can be just an excel file showing these things but you see where we can oh. see everything or something yeah. that we can collapse and expand just to have an idea of where will the things be and if i want to search something where will i look for it or if i just navigate does it make sense so that just so you see like even a json document with or tree view or something, a folder view, something like that that you can expand and collapse to see where it is. Even if it's all expanded, just to align it like this, but for everything. So proposals, and then I think people will react to say, oh no, it's too complex, or I can't find that, or where do I put that? If everything we have today is put somewhere, then there is a question about where do I put that? Or maybe it will be about, I like the overall experience, now, can we move this one to this one? And then it will just be about, okay, let me update the. Then in the PR, you can say, okay, I will do that in the PR. Fine. So no PR, right, just, I'll, just I'll an have, issue or uh, update an issue yeah. or create a new one and just have the tree of the thing here because so we can see everything and then we might be able to, to play with it during a design meeting. To optimize your program. Okay, good. Thank you. There's a another PR that you kind of approved. I just want to make sure it's safe to merge it because there was a lot. There was a voting on it. That vertical scrolling. Uh, you are the tiebreaker, and uh, I just want to make sure. Am I, I should go ahead and merge it. I'm not the tiebreaker. Right. Well, you were. I, and I didn't vote. You voted with. Why is the vote it, yeah. was your approval. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I, uh, okay, I said okay. Go on. If what? What's the number? Oh, uh, one two six two seven. It doesn't have the the tag. It's uh, steering. So sad. No, no, it doesn't because that one was voted on already, and I uh, I want to know if if it's okay to just go ahead and merge it. Locked, it can be locking. I can't lock it. Uh, I'm not reading a comment where someone misspells my name, so I'm oh, a devotee like this, right. Ishamko didn't vote. Sham, you need to vote. 
just last week, clean up. I don't care. And um, do you have approval? It's a it's a Thursday thing. If you've got approvals on the implementation, this is too much CSS for me. You need someone like Jasmine to at, at least say looks good. If, if it's just not even detailed review, but I won't have anything to say on the implementation. You know better than me for these things. So Thursday or ask Jasmine to say something. Um, and then, then there is another topic. Orchard August. We need to respect the people we join. Victoria says. Hi. Orchard August. So Orchard August is in Hungary. Tomorrow. Do you, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, so hi, uh, my name is Victoria and I am a business developer at uh, Lombic Technologies and I'm here to talk a little bit about the next Orchard Harvest. Um, so first I would like to thank you for the answers in the survey because it helped a lot uh, for us. Uh, we asked the community and also our uh, team and uh, the results uh, were that uh, the EU and the USA had almost the same vote and uh, currently we are evaluating uh, five cities. Um, first I was uh, evaluating uh, in the EU Amsterdam, uh, Lisbon, uh, Barcelona and uh, Frankfurt. Uh, because um, they had a lot of international flight. Uh, but uh, now I'm uh, evaluating also uh, Los Angeles because uh, we had some offer uh, in help of organizing if uh, it will take place in, um, in the USA. And um, and I, I have also contacted uh, Mark Hamill, whose uh, company can help uh, organizing the event. Uh, but uh, if you know someone with experience in this field, I would really appreciate if you could uh, send me or Zoltan uh, his or her contact so I can uh, contact them. Uh, I am uh, waiting for Mark's uh, feedback um, because uh, it would be uh, so much better to organize with them uh, uh, and uh, I will uh, ask uh, their uh, opinion about the, the place as well. Um, and. Uh, I would like to say that I am uh, sharing the details in, uh, in the GitHub as well um, uh, every week, uh, so you can uh, read the it. GitHub, uh, which one? Uh, at the Orchard Core, Orchard CMS. In the discussion board. In the discussion board, yes, oh, thank you. Oh, that's why I, so I don't have notifications on that, interesting. I don't know. Oh, OK, good yeah, to know. I, I haven't done, I didn't uh, do it uh, this week, but I, uh, yes, um, it's the last okay. week. Yeah, and I wrote uh, Berlin here, but uh, I changed it uh, to Frankfurt because um, I uh, just realized that uh, Frankfurt has a uh, so much bigger uh, airport and uh, many more um, international flights. So you're looking for contacts in these cities so people can help you organize it? Is that what we're looking, is that the request? Um, the request is uh, what uh, your opinion and uh, your experience uh, or advices uh, in connection with the cities and also it would be a really, really good help if uh, you have uh, some contacts there as well who can help. 
or also if uh, you have uh, some connection with uh, companies who are uh, dealing with the uh, event organization. <laughs> LA is too small. So yeah, the, it, uh, uh, he had a really good point. How come Las Vegas isn't listed? A lot of the people will probably come to Las Vegas for a vacation and, yeah, and for the event. <laughs> a lot of and people spend money anywhere for for vacation in the states or in Europe. I mean, because you're in Las Vegas, that, that's what you say. But uh, <laughs> yeah, historically, we've been in cities where we had local support, people to help organize the thing. Just mm -hmm. New York, we didn't have any anything. But Amsterdam, I don't think we had in, any support. In Las there. Vegas, oh I think I have connections to uh, help with the facilitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some cities where it's easy for yeah. for the the meetings and for the lodging. So that's two different things. Yeah. Um, of course, we can uh, look for other uh, cities as well. Uh, I'm really open for any advice. That's an issue because either yeah, it can be city based or it can be like uh, contact based, like, oh, I know someone in LA where I can help. So let's try to see if we can do it in LA, right? And it works with uh, 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 geographically. Or we want to do it in Barcelona because it's accessible. So can we find someone there? That's harder because it's harder to find someone, some, someone somewhere. Because yes. there's somewhere, we have so many options that we could take anything that's not a problem. Like Barcelona versus Amsterdam, yeah, there are, pros and cons, but if we have someone in Amsterdam, it will be Amsterdam. If you have someone in Barcelona, it will be Barcelona. So that's usually easier to start from who wants and can help organize something in their city. Then based on the options, like two, three, four options, we are like, we won't pick you because, because it's, I don't know, Hungary, or because I don't know, it's Greece, okay? And it's too far away, or it's too hot, or I don't like the food, or nobody can go there. So it's usually better to start from who wants to help? If there is only one person who wants to help, then is the city compatible? Yes, so let's do it there. Is the schedule compatible? So let's do it there. That's really how it works. And I should be fine because, yeah, I, I mean, if you are fine with that, that I, I think that's a better option than, say, Lisbon, because I, I know some Portuguese people working on Notre Dame. I'm sure they are based in Lisbon and they can help. And that's also mm -hmm. putting some pressure because we, are, we said we tell them, oh, we'll do that in Lisbon. They are like, sorry, I can't help. And I, or they, they will try, but they cannot because they didn't commit to it. So then it's a, it's a complex um, situation for everyone. So yeah, I think it's better to, but that's good to, uh, to talk about it during these meetings to see who can help. And then they can comment and say, yes, I'm willing to help finding a place, uh, suggesting things, finding good good prices for hosting the meetings and for some people. And then we can say, then people will say, oh, thank you, Mike, I'd love to go to Las Vegas. Or thank you, Mark, I'd love to go to wherever you are, whatever. And, and yeah. Yes, um, I, I will uh, check the survey again. Uh, because uh, there was uh, one question if uh, someone is willing to help in the organization part. So I will check it again uh, and uh, I will see the, the possible cities as well. Okay, then uh, so finding someone who can help locally. Uh, Q2, Q2, Q2 mean like tomorrow. May is for the holiday. When I say tomorrow, I mean Q2, quite second quarter. When I say tomorrow, it's because it's, it's like close. it's tomorrow, right? It's like no, almost like uh, uh, May. OK, so yeah, I think historically this is when we did that, not for New York, which was in February, I think. But otherwise, oh, uh, Alicante was in October because of it was a nice, um, but May would, yeah, then it depends on what 
it means locally like May in Barcelona and May in Frankfurt is not the same thing. Or May in Las Vegas or whatever. So or Los Angeles is in. Yeah, I from experience two months is a minimum, three months at least. Uh, so we'll be fine. Uh, but two months if it's well organized and it's it's easy to organize. The hardest thing is to find the money and the places and yeah, but that's usually two months is is totally doable because not much to do. Maybe this year. So main concern is um yeah holiday vacation and um COVID. Uh, you can't do like China is out of the way today, right? Because so that that's something to think about. Like in May, is there a risk that COVID is higher? But today is fine, I think. Anywhere uh, apart from China, there is the risk is mitigated and people are fine moving. Not as before, but better than last year. May okay. I, I heard anyone to comment on that and you've got a survey, so I have more data than we have. But, uh, also, I prefer Europe because this is the next in line. Last, uh, last time was in the States, so we said it should be Europe. Mm -hmm. It's my preference than if it's going into the US. I don't care, it's closer for me, but <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's for Europeans, it's better to go there. Um, okay. So to be continued, so we are looking for someone to help. And if this someone is in the US, that's good. If this someone is in Europe, that's good too. Uh, we'll make them fight and, and uh, analyze based on the, the opportunities. Uh, if someone says, I'm willing to help and host the event, so you don't even have to pay for the meeting room, it's even perfect. Like it's, oh, that's, yeah, that's that the best is. case, right? Even in Redmond, when it was Microsoft, we had to pay for the for the thing. It was crazy. I'm like, crap. Um, uh, yeah, when it when it had to be in London, we didn't have to because um, they they wanted to host us. But then COVID hit us exactly during the harvest schedule, so could not do that. Okay. That's a good feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Something else to add from anyone? Joff, if you are watching the recording, we can't get you in. It doesn't work. I don't know why. It's it's probably you because we tried a lot and it says it doesn't want to work. Um, questions, comments? I love to go to Greece, so there is. <laughs> but far away. Well, I think that we will arrange something for Cyprus. It would be easier. Suggest uh, something. But yeah, yeah, you know, it's time and everything. So yeah, you would also like to, but who wants to help do that? So then, and I'm sure for, for Lombik, it's also much easier to go to Cyprus than uh, to go to Los Angeles. Not that's the one, maybe they would like to go to Los Angeles, but it's easier to go to Cyprus. <laughs> Both of these are true, yes. What? What did you say, Jordan? Both of these are true, yes. But okay, I would love yeah. to go to Cyprus too. Okay, uh, we, we, we can make some calls and see. Make some calls. <laughs> okay, is, is other topics, questions, comments? We'll have another meeting next week. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you next week. Or Thank you. Thursday for the triage. Bye-bye.